we're really honored and delighted to have with us His Excellency Andrea Blankovic, Prime Minister of Croatia, attending with us COP27. Uh, Mr. Prime Minister, always great and honor having you with us at COP27. How is COP27 making a difference since we have the motto from vision to implementation? So implementation is a key word. Thank you very much, first of all, for hosting me in the Nile TV program, and it's a pleasure to be here in Sharm El Sheikh. Uh, also, I would like to thank uh, the Egyptian president, Al Sisi, and also the prime minister, Mr. Madbouli, whom I met in a bilateral meeting today for hosting this COP27. Indeed, as you said, the buzzword of this conference uh, by all the parties to the convention, of course, is the implementation. Not every single COP can be a referential conference where we would commit to new dates. But here, what I felt over the past two days, both in bilateral meetings and having uh, listened to a large part of the speeches of the colleagues is that everybody is taking issue of global warming seriously, that we are committing to implement what we said last year, whether it's the fit, fit for 55, whether it's the carbon neutrality. I think that the uh, weather conditions, which have been really bad over the past year, have demonstrated that, that if we do not act now, we shall see far more worse situation in the years to come. In my country, uh, this year, the um, uh, temperature of the sea in the Adriatic, which is a little bit north from here, was for the first time almost 30 degrees Celsius. And what the meteorologists are telling us, that this, the warmest summer, su summer since the meteorological records, might be seen in the future as one of the coldest or cooler ones. So this uh, explains the, I would say, the immediate necessity to act. How is charming charm making the difference? We're talking implementation, we're talking sustainability, and at the same time we're bringing on the table files that are very important for this sense of implementation, like climate finance, which is also key. I think it is essential. First of all, uh, we all know that the countries who are richer, who are more developed, should shoulder a uh, bigger burden and uh, make a bigger contribution and I think this was very clear especially last year in Glasgow where you could see the commitment uh, that came up from the European Union and other key actors across the world. I think we need some other major players to follow that uh, line and also to alleviate the burden for those who are less developed but the point of the fight against the climate change that it is done globally. We can't make a very good effort in a fragmented sense in one part of the world and then the other ignores the issue, the overall result will be negative. That's why we need to be really keeping everyone on board and that's why the key word of the implementation was essential here. Yes, uh, Mr. Prime Minister, we're engaging the youth because they are the future. Uh, His Excellency President Abdel Fattah Sisi is investing in the youth and we can see here uh, lots of climate champions are youth. How do you see that? How is that important? Well, I see that it's happening across the globe. Uh, when I talk to our youth in Croatia, now I've been Prime Minister already for full six years and I'm in the seventh year of being Prime Minister, I can tell you when we meet the young generation compared to those who are more experienced, the fear of the future, not only for their kids but even for themselves, is visible. This was an issue that didn't exist 30 years ago, let's say, among my generations when we were their age. Today, they are more aware, they are more action-oriented, they have a greater sense of social responsibility, and also they are pushing us and pressing us for actions. So everything that we as governments or the private sector or the international organizations or the media can do now will create better conditions for our successors, our families, our kids and our generations to come, but not in some sort of elusive, uh, uh, non-clear calendar. It is actually happening in the next couple of decades. Yes. So this is the issue. Yes, Mr. Prime Minister, a message from the mother of the world uh, to the whole world uh, about COP27. How do you see the organization? How do you see amazing charm and uh, the expectations of COP27? I think it was very well organized. Uh, I feel uh, comfortable. This is my second time in last uh, two or three years that I'm again in Sharm El Sheikh and the uh, level of organization is the highest one. You can be proud on it. Everything was uh, brilliant. Yeah. All, all the compliments. Yes. And also uh, the sky is always the limit, let me say, vis-a-vis uh, -vis our sense of partnership and strong bond with Croatia. 
Well, absolutely. I um, really am pleased that I spoke to your Prime Minister today. He has invited me to visit officially uh, Egypt, to come to Cairo. I have invited him to Zagreb. Uh, we will soon conclude the um, Convention on the Avoidance of Double Taxation. We have increased our trade and doubled it over the last uh, year. Uh, what I think we should do is uh, have more links because we are both Mediterranean countries. And uh, these are the routes that uh, are having a long, long, long historic uh, ties between Croats and the Egyptians. And I think that our cooperation in scientific and cultural field in tourism should be increased and brought to a higher level, as you said. Yes. Thank you so much, Your Excellency. Uh, Prime Minister Andrea Plankovic, Prime Minister of Croatia, for joining us here exclusively on ITV International. Great honor and pleasure. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you very much. Thank you.